first thing we have to do before we start the planking is to make sure that all of the ribs, or you might refer to them as frames, that they're all even, and you need to sand the edge of them so that when you place the board on the rib, that is as flat as possible, allowing the two boards to stick and mate perfectly. You will notice that I didn't cut the frames properly. And when I put the caliper on either side, I found there was a difference. And so I had to make up the space. So I laminated pieces on at various parts and then used a flat sander to make sure that the pieces were flat and that when stuck they would have this flat surface I just referred to. Because um, you need, the board needs an, a nice stressless attachment to the frame. In terms of the stern, you also need to make sure that the stern also has a fairly comfortable curve so that when you put the plank down, whether you heat it um, or wet it and then heat it, that the, the bend is not a compound bend. Normally the first plank to be placed is the garboard plank, which is the plank right down on the, on the keel. But in this case the instruction has us starting in a sense from the wheel and moving towards the garboard plank. If you live in a tropical climate, then um, all wooden products are, that are untreated are subject to powder post beetle, which this kit was originally subjected to or, more importantly, dry wood termites. It's impossible to know whether the powder post beetle came from Africa with the wood that was supplied uh, with this kit or somehow got into the kit while being stored at my home. The key is that you don't want to spend hundreds of hours working on a model only to have it destroyed by the insects. So you need to treat it with something. I'm not going to recommend any particular brand of termite treatment. It'll be specific to where you live and how easy it is to apply. Uh, but it should be white spirit based. In clamping a model, there's this wonderful little screw clamp, which I'm going to just go through with you. Assuming this is the rib, the first thing you would do is drill a hole in the rib. It's just a starter hole. And you place into the rib, you'll notice it has a high side and a flat side. The high side is to make sure that the pressure on the plank is flat. So you put the plank in against the frame and tighten down. And you get a nice flat pressure. We're following the instruction in the kit which um, suggests that the planks that are supplied be installed full length. Um, this would not be how the ship was built, but this is how the, um, the kit is suggesting that the planks be laid. So although I would normally actually cut them to scale size and then fit the individual pieces, we're following the instruction as, as per the manual and um, it actually makes it a lot easier um, because the joins can sometimes where the individual strakes meet can sublime sometimes be problematic so here's the first challenge of the planking is that if we put this plank on just following the same format We'll have very little coverage here. So we actually need to build this piece up. We can do that in two ways. We can shape the piece of wood so that it falls a 
and follows the contour of the shape and then add a piece here afterwards and then when we sand it down it will be properly balanced. In the case of the scratch built model where I just stuck the piece on this is probably how the kit intended the piece to be placed so that there would be a join here uh, which means you need to take this down some more so that this piece will fit flush against the stern that's been put in place. So that's what we've decided to do. We've chiseled this back down so that the stern piece is exposed and now we're running thinner pieces um, which will butt against the stern and um, get past this little bump that we have there. And we've used that thin piece all the way up as you can see using a combination of clamps including some of the screw clamps. Um, you will end up as I did with a few steelers in it uh, but again that's how the rail ship was built so it's not really an issue. Just to give you an idea of the final finish we have done a preliminary sanding which will give you a feel for what will be achieved on this getting through this difficult curve. Most of you have been through this before, how you taper the planks um, so that you have an even spread. The simplest way to do this is to put a piece of paper on the rib, mark off the distance and then measure it. And you do that for each one. In this model, number six is the longest um, distance. And then you divide that by the thickness of the planks. Um, in my case, these planks are five millimeters wide. So what that means is between here and here, there will be 14 planks. And then you take the distance, and not at the bow, you take the distance at the rib uh, inside from the bow, and I take the distance um, on the second one in. And then you divide the distance um, on both of these ribs by 14, and that will give you the um, the thickness of the taper at these two points. If you want it to be fairly sophisticated, you could actually work it out for each one of the ribs and you'll find that it will be not a straight line. And you cut the rib to size and then simply put it on a cutting board and cut out the rims and you'll get a tapered rib which should give you um, a fairly accurate way of going back and forward. It's quite clear that it's quite clear that when you get to the back this may start to become a little challenging and you will have to put steelers in on the back. If the strake is bending a lot you may need to put a ruler um, to make sure that you get a nice straight line when you're doing the taper. We have wet the plank and put it in place and we're going to leave it to dry and once it's dry, we'll come back and stick it. Um, you could force the drying of the plant by using the hair dryer um, that I had used earlier on. This is much easier than it first seems. Um, just take your time um, and use the screw clamps. They really do make it very easy at this stage um, to, to get that first set of planks in. She's starting to look like a real nice ship. As you proceed, you're going to start to find that where the two planks, um, the sides of the planks, butt against each other, um, sometimes there's a little airspace. So to resolve this, uh, when you trial fit the plank, you may find it's necessary to tape, taper the side as well. Um, so that the plank butts cleanly uh, against the plank that was installed previously. And um, this way you get a seamless join. 
remember we are painting the the bottom of the um, ship so um, there's nothing wrong with using filler um, to cover up any imperfection where the two planks meet now it's time to put the garboard stick on and I have to say it's given me a lot of trouble trying to figure out how to fit it best um, it's the unique shape of the keel which starts high and then slowly feeds down towards the, um, the stem so my view of it is that we need to get it on as straight as possible so to do that I am going to put the end flush on the stern and then we're going to wet it and turn the streak in and then it'll come off around here and we'll just cut that off so that gives us a relatively straight line along the garbage streak do the same thing on the other side in terms of the gluing up it's much the same that we've done in the past a combination of PVA and a little bit of CA right where the taper um, comes to an end um, at the bow just to have a nice tight fit so that when we put the next plank there's not an issue so here we have the garbage tray installed um, we'll have to remeasure the distances here and here to get the taper going forward um, but we're pretty happy with how that has come out 